Welcome back to Transfer Winners and Losers, everybody. Chris Hamill is in the hot seat after what can only be described as the greatest weekend of sport in 2019, from an English perspective, anyway. Absolute bloody flames, like your hair, red hot, mate. Yes, Ben Stokes doing it for the Gingers. What a performance, what an innings, what a man. Shout out Joffre Archer. Touched by God when it came off his bat. Yeah. New England were destined to win the World Cup. So what lucky. else? The big sexy Serb, Djokovic winning a mm. mammoth Wimbledon final. I think the longest Wimbledon final ever, at least in the men's. And Algeria. who else are we missing out? Algeria. Riyad Mahrez wrapping up a final appearance for Zach's second nation. Yes, pretending he supports Algeria when he needs some success. He's nowhere to be seen when they're losing multiple games. But when they're winning, suddenly Jalab the Algerian comes out of the woodwork. I'm quite into it. I'm quite into his kind of, he's, he's rekindled his love yeah. for North Africa. It's that it? Hamill and Leicester. Like yeah. when, when they're winning, he's out of the woodwork. But let's not talk about Leicester because I feel like we talked about Leicester on every single show last week. And there was some complaints in the Sunday Vibe Very comments. True. Very true. Uh, let's move on to the first winner, which comes from Tat Tassin. And it's Barca and Antoine Griezmann. Ooh. And let's blitz through this because I feel like we've been discussing this transfer for 18 months, Antoine. Sort out your hair as well. What is going on? You look like Will Ferrell when he was unveiled. I know. I don't know what he's thinking at the moment. <laughs> it's a totally bizarre look. Anyway, £108 million pounds he's cost. Finally unveiled, like I said, on Sunday to much fanfare. You know, despite rumours that the fans didn't want him. Quite clearly not the case. He's going to wear the number 17 shirt and, of course, said playing next to Messi will be an incredible joy. Contractually obliged to yes. say that. Shock, horror. I've never heard that before from a Barcelona new signing. Because rumours beforehand did suggest that Messi and Co didn't really want him at the Ooh. club. Bit of a troublemaker. Released La Decision last year, didn't he? You know, that went down that like was a brilliant. sack of potatoes, that was didn't class, it? Wasn't it? So he is creeping up to the goats. Anyway, the World Cup winner joins on a five year deal, which includes a £717 million release clause, just in case PSG get any ideas if he has a good year. <laughs> um, however, there has been some conflict with Atleti. They state that the fee paid for £72 million short of his release clause. Now, they claim he agreed to move to Barcelona before the £180 million release clause was slashed to 108. The threshold was July 1st, and they're now threatening legal action. So, looking forward to that quagmire. Yeah. I mean, is that not tapping a up? Deceit. It's, it's a very interesting situation because obviously back in March, the Atleti are claiming that the deal was struck. So, mm. is that not tapping up because he's still under contract? No idea. Uh, Don't understand I, how it works. Also, I'm delighted I got the word quagmire into winners and losers. Anyway, Griezmann, always been a controversial figure. Uh, and what is slightly more, you know, bemusing than his hair is where he's going to fit into that lineup because in a 4-3-3 he comes in at the cost of an Usman Dembele doesn't he yeah which means Usman Dembele possibly moving on and if rumors to believe on Twitter which they probably shouldn't be Barcelona are offering about five players for Neymar and yeah. Coutinho and Dembele are two of them yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's not like Usman Dembele started every single minute of every single game last season either. So we say it comes at his expense, probably in the squad more so than the first team, because unless Valverde shifts up and just goes, OK, we're going to play Griezmann, we're going to play Suarez, and we're going to play Messi as a front three, then it's just a little bit of a bizarre signing. Because is he going to shift back out onto the wing, having played quite centrally at Atletico Madrid? His goal-scoring record is fantastic there. 133 goals and 50 assists since joining Madrid. And obviously, that output is going to be massively missed. I think that's as much of a point here for Barcelona as his output for yeah. the club is what he's taken away from Atletico. I know Jordi Alba just signed a big new contract and he's had a very good year, at least you know going forward, plenty of assists. Yeah. Um, but are they expecting him to run that whole left channel again? Because even if Griezmann lines up on the right, you want Messi floating around in the centre, yeah. just behind Suarez. You want Suarez to run out forward. Is little Jordi Alba going to have to play two positions? Or unless Valverde goes to a 4 4 2 and plays Griezmann right wing, which would be absolutely hilarious. Or Valverde does the smart thing, realises Frankie Dion can play all three midfield positions by himself, doesn't need any support, and just plays a 4 1 
five, which I would really like to see. Uh, either way, let's talk a little bit about Atleti because they are losing their star man. Uh, they've obviously got Yao Felix through the door, but I think there are some concerns that there's going to be a lot of pressure on him and Morata to mm. score their goals. So they have, by paper reports anyway, made a move for, uh, for Real Madrid's James Rodriguez which would be really interesting. I think that one's being reported by Marco. Obviously, we were chatting about him potentially going to Napoli mm. on shows like Continental Club uh, over the last few weeks. But that move seems to have slowed down because Napoli aren't too keen to pay as much as Real Madrid want. And Atletico could steal in the last minute. We have seen business done between Real Madrid and Atletico on the reg recently. Who went? Was it Marcus Llorente's gone? We've seen Teo Hernandez. Hernandez go the other way. Now we're potentially seeing James Rodriguez go back. Do you think he can fill his boots? I don't think he's going to cover that output from Griezmann. I don't think Yao Felix is going to cover that output. And I'm worried about Morata at 65 mil. Yeah. I mean, fundamentally, Morata's fine. I think Morata's fine at that price. Fundamentally, I'd be worried about Hamas Rodriguez playing over 15 league games. I don't think he's done that for the last three or four seasons. I think the last time he played over 25 might have been for Real Madrid when he first joined from Monaco. So I'd be worried about his fitness because Antoine Griezmann was literally playing every minute. Of every single game and doing everything in that front line. Either mm. way, let's move on from our first winner to our first loser because it sort of revolves around the same situation. Yes, yeah, staying in the realms of Barcelona then, our first loser is Neymar. And this comes from Kay Saunders, 1-2-1. The Brazilian not really getting his own way. Toys have been thrown out of the pram. Yes, that move hangs in the balance, of course, Neymar's potential return to Barcelona. He didn't show up to the first day of PSG training this summer, subsequently being fined 375,000 euros Jump, by Leonardo. Just a slap on the back of the hands. Naughty boy. And he has been adding fuel to the fire all week that he might well leave PSG, of course, playing in a charity match. Uh, five versus five, and then saying the greatest moment of his career, I think, was beating PSG 6-1. Yeah. Not particularly fantastic PR, given that you're currently in a dispute with PSG about leaving. Uh, PSG's president, Nasser al Khalafi recently quoted as saying, I no longer want to have a superstar behaviour at mm. the club. And if that is the case, this clearly doesn't align with that vision. I mean, we love Neymar, fantastic player, but where he fits back into this Barcelona lineup, if he does move back, beggars belief. Like Griezmann, Neymar, Messi, Suarez. How on earth do you make that work? Because PSG is surely going to want to recoup most of that fee. Mm. Well, the most feasible thing for Barcelona is the uh, scenario we discussed before, isn't it? A player swap because they need to get players off. Yeah. The wage bill. Uh, people will like them better continue obviously taking up massive wages uh, whilst rotting on Valverde's bench. Um, and also, I'm a bit puzzled as to how Barcelona plan on meeting FFP demands uh, if they don't part ways with some of their massive assets. Mm. And PSG are one of the only uh, viable destinations for players like Coutinho, for players like Dembele, who would demand a massive fee and yeah, massive annual packages. It's all very confusing. Neymar would know that coming at the cost of with Luis Suarez, wouldn't, it? wouldn't they? Yeah, Neymar agrees with Messi front line with Luis Suarez rotating in and out. I mean, it is sexy, but it's also pricey. Quite clearly wants to return to La Liga as well, doesn't he? Not finding mm. league and very sexy. And his numbers suggest he's just completed it, mate. 1.23 expected goals and assists per game. That's twice the output of Sadio Mane in Bin. the Premier League. It's ridiculous. He is making a mockery of the competition in Liga. And I think he only started 16 games last campaign. 1,400 minutes and he's still racking up disgusting output. Uh, time for him to move on, I imagine. Don't want him wasting away uh, his prime years in Liga, but it's of his own making. He's got no one but himself to blame for this scenario that he finds himself in. And despite PSG's poor performance in the Champions League, because let's have it right, that's what he was bought in for, to secure that prestigious bit of silverware, or at least get past the quarterfinals, um, 
I mean, he can't really be held to account for that. Five goals, two assists in six games last season in Europe's Premier Competition. Topping the list for dribbles, 5.3 per 90. How? 1.8 more than second place Messi and second for key passes behind Tony Cruz. And of course, Barcelona also desperate for the Champions League, having not clinched it since 2015. Messi is demanding this move, so I've heard. But, you know, paper talk, isn't it? So probably rubbish. Should Neymar go back to Barcelona or stay where he is? How do you make sense of this move? Let us know in the comments below. Let's move on to our final wins. Our final winners then are Leicester City this week. Even though we said we weren't going to talk about them anymore, we are. This was sent in by Stephen MH TV. Yeah, last minute addition to the script because, of course, the Harry Maguire situation rages on and it is dominating headlines and it would be one of the tastiest moves of the summer because, yeah. like his head, the fee is absolutely ginormous. We're not going to talk about Tielemans though, if that's a silver lining to yeah, anyone out Yeah, no there. more Tielemans. Best bit of business for the summer. It's done. It's done. It's gone. It's done. Anyway, after months of speculation, it seems like Harry Maguire to Manchester United is edging closer. But less are holding out for £75 million. Pounds. Now, the Sun did claim yesterday that United had agreed a fee of £16 million plus add-ons. But numeral reliable Manchester United sources like Sam Pilger... Uh, who's a journalist in Manchester, claim this isn't the case and the deal is still some way off. Now, the England international is currently on pre-season with Leicester. Uh, they're in France, I believe, and he's expected to be part of the match day squad for their friendly against Scunthorpe United. Scunners. Come on, you... Yeah, scuns. Um, anyway, <laughs> according to the Telegraph, though, the setback is that Manchester United are unwilling to go over the £60 million threshold. Leicester won a record-breaking transfer fee, a club record-breaking transfer fee for the Englishman who has four years left on his contract. But unsurprisingly, United not willing to part ways with... Would that make him the most expensive defender in the world? Van Dijk was, what, 75? I think this is 60 plus 20. 60 so plus 80. 20, so in total... Maybe, or yeah. just about. Don't, of course, know, you know, know of any add-ons for, for Virgil van Dijk. Um, but, that would, but that would feel preposterous. Yeah, so it would be a lot of money, wouldn't it, for Manchester United? But, you know, need a centre-back. Don't have much imagination in our recruitment department, do we? That's an understatement, by the way. Uh, but this move, to me, I think probably will eventually get done. It smells like the sort of thing that it's just a PR thing where Leicester want a world record fee and then it'll be like, OK, Harry wanted to leave. Harry, you can leave. Man United need it. We'll take the world record fee. Everybody is a winner. But let's talk about another potential winner out of this transfer, Brighton, who, from the same report, if it's to be believed, uh, is that Lewis Dunk could be the replacement to Leicester for £45 million, pounds, which seems like point? a lot of money to me for Lewis Dunk. Having taken 80 in for Harry Maguire, I would back Leicester to use slightly more imagination mm. in the market. We've seen them target some really, really exciting talent over the last few years uh, in the transfer market. And to go for Lewis Dunk just doesn't seem to fit their blueprint, in my opinion, anyway, given that he is, of course, 27 now. He would be the fifth most expensive defender of all time. He did put up some fairly strong numbers and obviously formed a fantastic partnership with Shane Duffy last season, effectively keeping Brighton in the league, really, uh, with some of their performances. Uh, I think he was making two and a half tackles and interceptions per 90, which is better than Maguire. Uh, he wasn't as good aerially, obviously. Maguire's massive head helps him out there. But, to me, it just doesn't sit right. Yeah, like you know Leicester a, a lot better than I do. Do you think Leicester would pay 45 mil for Lewis Dunk? I mean, Lee Congerton is their head of recruitment now, isn't he? And he did sign a man for Celtic for over a million pounds who only played one game against Morton. Okay. So, maybe their transfer policy you know, might have shifted somewhat. And it might be a little less imaginative. It might be a little bit more on the nose. But 45 million for... I like him. A player like Lewis Dunk. I, 
it, I just can't make sense of the, the transfer market if that happens. And also, like, <laughs> I, I look at Harry Maguire and I think, OK, ball playing centre back. We all know how good Harry Maguire is with the ball at his feet. I never think the same about Lewis Dunk. You know, Maguire is making over 60 passes per 90. Dunk, 40. Like, that's a mm. big drop off taking 20 passes off him at a much, much worse percentage. 40 is not too bad for a side who are going to be, you know, not as possession heavy as a Brendan Rodgers is Leicester side. Um, so I'd back him to lift those numbers up. But the age profile worries me. 27, 45 million pounds. Older than Maguire. It's, it's a little bit short term. It feels a little bit slapdash. Like this move might happen l later on in the window. If, if that happened in the last... 48 hours, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think Leicester will probably take that to the wire in order to find better value. I think that'd be the sensible thing to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tarkovsky would probably cost less, and I, I rate him probably equally as highly. Yeah, I would agree. I think if this move does happen for Dunk to Leicester, it will be really, really late because they'll be looking at other targets on the continent. Either way, Maguire to Manchester United seems to be picking up steam, and Leicester could be big profits. The final losers then, and it's the Irons. Sorry, Bobby Siegel. Sealers Funch. He sent Valencia in as a winner. We've reversed it. West Ham, they're going to miss out on the number one striking target, apparently. Yes, well, they've already missed out on their number one striking target, which was, of course, Maxi Gomez, as the 22-year-old completed his move to Valencia. West Ham had previously agreed to pay his 50 million euro release clause, but it appears that the player wanted to remain in Spain rather than coming to London. Valencia were therefore able to get the deal over the line for just 14 million euros, although they did throw in Santi Mina on the back of Good that. Plan. So it's good. I think that's quite an interesting move. Santi Mina mm. going one way, Maxi Gomez going the other. But either way, for West Ham, it's a real hammer blow. Of course, they've hey. already lost Marco Arnautovic to China for just 20 million pounds, given that they rejected around 40 million pounds back in January. And it's easy to see why they wanted Maxi Gomez too. He has been putting up some fantastic numbers. 17-18 uh, campaign, chipped in with 21 goal contributions in the league. Uh, that's around about the correct level he should be at according to expected goals and assists as well. So he's not overperforming, he's not underperforming, he's hitting really, really steady levels. Did the same last season, I think it was 13 goals and five assists uh, against an expected goals of 12 goals and six assists. And for a Celta team that isn't exactly the most free-flowing, packed full of stars side. Yep, that is very impressive, yep. you know. I think they scored 59 goals in La Liga last season, so he contributed to 30% of the team's output. Mm. So you can see why West Ham wanted him. He's clearly an exciting talent. Patrick Van Straten was doing tweets about him back in March 2018, I saw, when I typed in Maxi Gomez onto my timeline today. So I think they'll be pretty infuriated to miss out on this move, it has to be said. Yeah, West Ham's pursuit of a striker not going all that well, is it? And option number two, not exactly clear-cut either. David Gold has been pursuing Frankfurt's Sebastian Aller for a number of weeks now and he even favourited a tweet about him joining the club. Stop teasing the West Ham fans, David, and just get the deal over the line, mate. Um, Frankfurt are considering a £40 million bid from West Ham right now. Not rejected it, but of course... If they sold in, they'd be turning over yeah. their entire forward line, barring Rebic, in one summer. Letting Luka Jovic go to Real Madrid for £60 million. That would be a tough ask for the manager yeah. to come up with the goods in that regard, wouldn't it? Now, you can see why West Ham would want the big man. Uh, he's still just 25 years old. He scored 10 plus goals in each of his last five seasons. So very consistent in the bully. 18-19, uh, he got 15 goals and 9 assists against an next year 14 goals and 8 assists. So not too far off his underlying numbers. And he is just an expert at bringing other players into the game. A very selfless player. 1.9 key passes for a striker. He's pretty bloody good. Um, no wonder he got so many assists. And he should work pretty well with Felipe Anderson down that left-hand side. Of course, someone that likes to cut inside and contribute two goals across that forward line. Uh, his height, bonus for West Ham as well. Yeah. Means they can go direct, which they often did with Arnautovic. Um, he, he became pretty uh, expert holding the ball up, didn't he? As Anderson, you know, played off of him. So we had Sebastian Haller winning 209 aerial duels down last season. That's 59 more than any other player in the Bundesliga. 
uh, six foot three. Um, he is an imposing force. Yes. Pretty imperative though that the Hammers get their next big money signing in that department, correct? Because they've signed 37 strikers since 2010. What the hell? And they've only scored 199 goals in 920 games. It's embarrassing. That they is just, so bad. They just need some consistency. I mean, who was their last consistent striker? Oh, now to for three months. Yeah. Does that count as Cole consistency? Cole and Cole. Deary me, the state of it. So, let's leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it for this week's episode of Winners and Losers Transfer Edition. What is coming tomorrow though on EFD Hamster? Look out for transfer review and get your suggestions in for presenter picks or fan picks. Uh, we profile one player at the end of the show who you want to know about. It won't be Yuri Tielemans. Bye. <laughs>